It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington. Hello, everybody. Praise God for another opportunity, for another privilege to come to your homes, wherever you are, to hear and share with you the Word of God. I thank God for His mercy, for His grace, and I, I, I hope that you're ready to receive the Word of God. The other week we had a message about how important it is to really hear God's Word, to respond it, to take it, to, to, to eat off the blessed table of God's Word, to, to uh, abide by it, to hear it, not just with, with our outer ears, but to obey God's Word. Very, very important. So we're going to get into the Word of God today, and it's so important that you hear this. I pray to God Almighty that he will let this Word be sown in your hearts. Paul, uh, God blessed him. You know, he was one of the, the very few men that God just, uh, he, you know the story, knocked him off his horse. Uh, Jesus spoke to him, let him know who he was, introduced himself to him. And he, he sent Paul to hear the Word of God. And, and for somebody to lay hands on him, pray for him, that he received the Holy Ghost and, and, and that his sight would be returned to him, that he, he could see again. So, and, and Paul with Timothy, a lot of others, they did a, a lot of work just spreading the gospel, spreading the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, preaching the word. And at, at this time, uh, Paul and, and uh, I think with Timothy and, and Silas had, had been, been working together, just getting the gospel out. And, and he found himself now, he was waiting on Timothy and, and Silas, he found himself in Athens. And we just, we're just going to read through this, and I hope you're with me. We might just read a, a little bit today in the book of Acts. And it says, now, while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city just wholly given to idolatry. You know, you know what idolatry is? The worship of idols, the worship of all kinds. And, and idolatry, idol worship includes the worship of our own will, our own selves, our, our self-made gods. And we, we make uh, icons and call it gods. Things are people that we've made gods out of in our own minds. And it, it, it bothered him because he, he, he knew Jesus. No, he'd accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. So he, and he disputed in, in the synagogue with the Jews and, and with devout people in the market daily. And, and, he met with them, and he met with them in the market. So certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Sto Stoics encountered him and, and said, what would this babbler say? And uh, uh, others said he, he seemed to be a set of forth of strange gods. Listen, called that strange because he was in, involved. He was really, he, he loved Jesus. He was just empowered by the Holy Ghost, preaching the word of God, preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, it's all about Jesus, folks. No matter what, it's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. Never, ever forget that the words that Jesus spoke, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, nobody, no man comes to the Father but by me. He's the only way. Not through any religion, any re, a certain denomination, just because you've been baptized, wh whatever it is, or because you knew somebody or know somebody who's saved and you're good. No, no, it, it, it doesn't matter. Jesus is the key. And un until you meet him, and have a personal relationship with him, come through to him and through him, you will not be saved. So they said that Paul is trying to start up some strange religion. He's, he seems to be a set of forth of, of, uh, of, of strange gods, they called it, because he preached unto them, unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Praise God. And, and, and you know that's, that, that, that's part of the gospel right there. That, that Jesus hung on Calvary's cross, he was crucified, shed his blood as the Lamb of God, because without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. He shed his blood. Just, see, this is not about just joining the church and just being religious. This is real. This, this is the, the real anointing, the power of God. This is God's way, God's, God's plan of salvation for man. 
So he shed his blood on Calvary's cross, died. He died, gave his life. He gave his life on Calvary's cross, shed his blood, and was buried in a tomb for three days and three nights. Three days and three nights, dead and buried. And on the third day of his death, praise God, the Holy Spirit of God raised up Jesus from the dead. And he's alive. He's alive evermore. And he, he was seen uh, uh, by his disciples and, and people who loved him and knew him he, uh, uh, 40 days. And then he, he ascended back into heaven. He ascended back into heaven. And so, and, 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 but the work continues. Something else happened after that. But anyway, he, this is it's the Jesus, this is the gospel that Paul was preaching. So they took him and, and brought him unto Aragopas, right? Saying, may we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? For you, that you bring certain uh, strange things to our ears. So this is strange. Uh, we would know, therefore, what these things mean. For all the Athenians, listen to this. These people had a, 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 a strange spirit. This spirit uh, just covered the, the whole city, the whole town, almost everybody in it. For all the Athenians and strangers which were, which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. That's all they did. That, they were always in the, hearing and telling. And, and, and God, uh, of, of course, through the teaching of the Holy Ghost that he gave back by, by, by Paul, a man that's, that's a heretic, after the first and second admonition, you tell somebody about, about Jesus, you give them the truth, you just say, reject. Don't, don't keep going back to that person. Don't try to make people get saved or you're going to make them just believe what you let them Let them go. Let them alone. Because that's all they do. Some people just like to debate. That, so don't, don't do it. Don't do it. So, but this is all these people did. So Paul decided to, to talk to them a little bit. And he, and he said, then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said to the men of Athens, say, I perceive that in all things you're too superstitious. And, and many people do in, in the so-called, listen, so-called Christian religion, in the so-called church, some people bring a lot of superstition into what, what they say they believe, in, in, into their doctrine. These people believed in some of everything, everybody. They didn't know what to believe. They just believed every, every, everything. And, and he, he let them know, say, brothers, you, you, so you all are just too superstitious. He said, as I passed by and beheld your devotions, the things that you worshiped, praised, offered to, or whatever, he said, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God whom ye whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Praise God. He knew who they were trying to address. That they had an altar set up to the unknown God. They didn't know who he was, they didn't know anything about him. And, and, and he said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know who this is and, and who this is all about. And, and, and you can't help but, but, but think and, and, and recall how Jesus told the, the woman that he met at, at, in Samaria at the well, he, he said, you worship, you know not what. You don't know what you're worshiping. And he gave her the word of God. He introduced himself to her. She met Jesus and her life changed. Praise God. She received the, the spirit of his word. She, she believed that he was the Messiah. Her life changed. You, there's no way you can meet Jesus and your life not change. I'm not saying you will be perfect, but you will grow in the grace of God. And there's one thing about it. What, well, I'm, I'm, we're going to just get, get on in, into this. Your, your life will continually change, and you will always, always, brothers and sisters in Christ, you will always find that you're not perfect, so don't ever think that. That you're not smart than everybody, so, so don't think that. That, that, that you're sin, that, that God, see, God's always going to be working on you. And he's going to work on you through his word and by the spirit of the Holy Ghost. God's always going to work on you. So he, he said, see, I'm going to declare this God unto you. He said, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwells not in temples made with hands. Neither is worshiped with men's hands. Hallelujah. As though he needed anything. God didn't need us. Listen. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and has made of one blood all nations of men to, for to dwell on the face of the earth, and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, 
if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Why? Because God is everywhere. God is everywhere. For in him, only through God Almighty, only through his life-giving spirit, for in him we live and move and, and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said. For we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think of the Godhead as like unto some kind of, something that, that's been made. In other words, with gold or silver or stone or a, a cut out or graven by art or man's device. And so, now that was the time, say, in, in the times of this ignorance, God winked at it. He, he overlooked it. But now he commandeth all men everywhere to do what? To repent. To repent. And this is what God is looking for. Commanding people, looking for people to repent from their own ways, from their own evil deeds, from their own ideologies, from their own uh, evil surmisings about God, from their own self-will and self-righteousness, their, their own religious attitudes that allow them to live in sin and still believe that, 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 that they, they, are, they, they belong to God as a, a believer, a child of God. Just because you believe there is a God doesn't mean that, that you belong to God. God, as a child, as a son or a daughter. So God said, I, I, he, he winked at all, all this, this idolatry at one time. He, he sort of overlooked it. But now God is calling on all men everywhere to repent. You know what repent means? That means to turn away from whatever way you're going, from your sins, from your evil, your own thoughts. Turn from your own ways to the ways of God, to the ways of God. Turn away from it. Listen, to repent, to turn around and, 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 and never go back. And, and we find ourselves, even as believers, in, a, in, our, in our daily lives. Jesus taught us to, to, to pray and forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. We, we find daily that, that as we grow, as we learn, that there are certain things that we need to repent from. That we do. And, and by the way, there's no way you can come to Jesus without repenting, repenting from your sins. There's no way you can, you can make a reconciliation or have a change of heart, a change in your life without repenting. You have to turn from your own, own way. And you know why people find they, they can't? Pride, pride would not allow some people to repent. Some people don't really know what the goodness of God. Some people sit up in church. In a, in a church building, I'll put it that way. Uh, uh, well, if the truth has been preached there or not, you know, and, and have just the hatred in the hearts of other people. That, that's, they don't belong to God. That's the thing. Have hatred and, and, and feel like it's all right for them to be that way, to be bigoted, to be prejudiced, to, to have a heart full of unforgiveness and malice and envy and jealousy. Like, that's okay. They have not repented. They've not turned from their own evil way, from their own ad ideas and, and the lifestyle of the, of the old man, the flesh. They, they don't think it's necessary that God, God will accept them. They're special. God will, will accept them like they are. They can be evil and say, to, no way. It does not happen. God is calling the, the lost and saved, uh, saved alike to deal with repentance. First of all, if you're lost, you have to repent. Turn from your own way, from your own ideas, your own thoughts, your own ways, and, and, and turn to Jesus. That's it. That's turn to Jesus. After being saved, you, you find that, yes, you can't hold animosity against people and live. We're going to read it. That's, that's evil. That's the evil heart of unbelief. You can't do it. You've got to believe God and, and live and accept Jesus, accept the word of God the way God gives it, and, and live that way. People need to repent. Some people cannot repent. We, we talked about Esau the other week. He could not repent. Some people can't repent because, see, the goodness of God, see, the good, it, that's what it takes. They haven't seen, they haven't experienced the goodness of God, the overwhelming goodness of God that leads a person to truly repent. And to repent doesn't, see, some people try to cover it. They try to mask it. They try to say, well, I repent. I, I, I turn from it. I'm going to stop being so hateful or so mean. But they, they just say, that's an a, a outside thing. They just talk about it. But in their hearts, in their, their hearts are still full of, of, of misery and still full of bitterness. Why? Because they have not repented. Still full of unforgiveness. Why? Because they have not repented. 
They've not turned to Jesus. They've not turned to God. And I hope, it's the, I hope the, the, the case is, is, is not that God has rejected them. I hope not. I hope that's not the case. But, but listen to this. And it says, and, but now he commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Praise God. By that man, Jesus, by Jesus, whom he has ordained, whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. God has t- he, he's shown that, that this is his anointed. And, and we're going to, we, yeah, we'll talk about that tomorrow. That, that, that he has raised, he's raised Jesus from, the, he is the son of the living God. The anointing of God, the, the Holy Ghost is, is in his, his, the power of the Holy Ghost is in his, his hands, his power. And he pours that spirit out on whomsoever he will. Those who have, who will really, truly receive, receive him. Now, Let's go. Let's let's go to, to the well. We're already in Acts, so let's let's just continue reading in the book of Acts. Uh, let's see. The, this we're gonna just deal with this word a little bit. We're gonna stay with with repentance. So I might be bouncing around here for a minute. All right. So here in Acts the the second chapter, the thirty. Seventh verse, let's see. Praise God. Okay, yeah, this, this is Peter. After the, the Holy Ghost was, was poured out on, on, on the day of Pentecost. He, he, he gave the message. <laughs> We're not going to read all of it, but he, he, he gave the, the message. And uh, he, he told them what was really going on, what, what was happening, that, that the prophets had, had already uh, foretold this. God had already promised it. God sent forth his promise. And he, he said that this is what's really happening before your face. He, he, he gave them the, the word of God, quoted the prophets. And, and he said here in the second chapter, 36th verse, he said, therefore, let all the house let all the house of Israel know assuredly without any doubt whatsoever that God has made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, and he already stated he, he, he was risen from the dead, both Lord and Christ. And when they heard it, and you just wish people would do that today, when they heard that, that Jesus Christ was Lord because God had demonstrated. He demonstrated his power, his authority there on the day of Pentecost, Pentecost on the, the, the outpouring of, of, of the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it. The, 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 the Holy Ghost of God, the Holy Spirit of God unto the believers that were waiting. And, and uh, he, he gave them the message and the people, when they heard it, and instead of getting angry, see some people want to, want to some people say, "Wow, well, I already know that." You know, that people are stupid. I, I hate to say it, but human beings, when it comes to God, I'm, God must look at us sometimes, and I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But they heard it. These people heard it, and they were pricked in their heart. It stuck them the right way, and and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? We've been going the wrong way. We've been looking for the wrong things. We, we've been expecting the wrong thing. We've been believing the wrong thing. We've been depending on our own self-righteousness or whatever. What shall we do? What shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, first of all, repent. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For remission. So if you if you been, get saved, you receive Jesus as your Savior, and then be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise God for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Everything, salvation, everything, every change in a believer's life after being saved, everything, brothers and sisters, starts with repentance, not just of some kind of religious act or, or pretending, but f- true from the heart, repentance. Re- repentance, turning from your own ways, from our own ways to the ways of God. Praise God. We have to 
Thank you, Jesus. We have to accept that. Yeah, and, and, and a believer is willing to accept it. So let's, let's go on to, to read in St. Mark here. We're going to just, just talk about this, this, hopefully, God willing, whatever the Lord wants to do. This one thing today, just repenting. That is so very important. So very, and in upcoming days, you'll, you'll see why. Okay? Repenting. So very important. If you, if you want to, to, to see, even the, the, the Bible tells us in the way we live on, the, on a daily basis or whatever, that we should be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is that? That's a form of repentance, a different way of thinking. Hallelujah. A different way of thinking. Now, let's, 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 let's read. Let's go. See if we can get it here in the book of St. Mark. And I hope you're, you're following with me in the word of God. You know, some people hate to say I was, they won't admit it, that they were wrong. You know what, I, I remember speaking of being wrong. I used to think that, you know, when you're growing up, you, you, the, the teachers give you a few scriptures and you, you, your, your family take you to church or make you go to church, whether they want or not. <laughs> you hear about the creation. God made the, created the heavens and the earth in, in seven days and, oh man. And I remember one, one, a beautiful poem that probably a lot of us, us have heard or know or used to be able to recite the creation, James Weldon Johnson, you know, it's, uh, so you, you hear about things and, and you know that uh, God created the heavens and the earth in, he did it all in six days. On the seventh day, God, that was the Shabbat, the, the, God, he, he rested. The, he just took that time, not meaning that God was just worn, no, worn out, tired. He, God, he, he refrained from, from the, his work. It was completed. And that's why seven people used to take the number seven as meaning completion. You know, it, 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 he, he, he was done. He was done. But he, he actually completed the work in six days and made man, created man on, on the Sabbath, seventh day. Now, I used to think after a while, getting a little bit older, now I think I, I was, I might have been saved by then too. I used to believe that, uh, that it, since one day is with the Lord, as, as a thousand years, a thousand years is, as one, that's a man. So God did all this work and let it all come about. And, and for every day this mentioned, it, it was a thousand years because the, he put the seeds and the seeds had to grow and the plants had to grow and the, 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 the animals came forth and they had to replenish themselves. And the, you know, so I, I, I'm thinking maybe 6,000, yeah, I should believe that. Yeah, you know, but, but why? Because I was missing something. I was missing, and, and people and people refuse to acknowledge that. And a lot of people today are missing something, missing something concerning Jesus, concerning Christ, concerning salvation, and they won't admit it. They, the people are too proud to admit that they were wrong. They, oh God, some people are too proud. They'll, they'll go to hell because they, 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 they knowing that they were wrong, they're wrong about that. They really, they've never been saved. You know. And, anyway, I tell you what I was missing. I was missing the fact that the Bible still said, and the evening and the morning were the first day. <laughs> it was one day. So it couldn't have been uh, that it took uh, 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 6,000 years or it took 1,000 years for, for each phase of God's creation to come into being. And, and I just wish people today would, would to be with us. I was wrong about that, you know? God have mercy on me. And, and that's what these people did. They said, well, what shall we do? What, just what shall we do? Some people don't, they, they hate to admit that they need help. They hate to admit it to themselves, that they need teaching, they need help. You know, and, and people do. Without it, you will you perish. You will perish. Now, let's, let's go to St. Saint Mark, the first chapter. This was after Jesus had been baptized by John the Baptist. You know, he, he, he said, John baptized me. And, and he said, I don't even, I don't, I, I'm not even worthy to carry your shoes or to unlace your shoes or to tie your shoes. He said, I'm not, and he, he said, just, just do it to fulfill all righteousness. I want, to, want to do it all. He fulfilled everything, every righteous act that had to be done. He, he was baptized by John, baptism of repentance, and, and of course the, 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 the Spirit of God just sat on him. And anyway, in, in the 12th verse, it says, and immediately the spirit drives him into the wilderness. Jesus, what spirit drove him into the wilderness? And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beast, and the angels ministered unto him. You know, praise God. It's the Holy Ghost. 
You know, it, it took him out to be tempted of, of, of Satan. He fasted 40 days, 40 nights. He was there. Now, it says now, after, the, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of, of what? The kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Praise God. Turn from your own self-righteous ways. Turn from being so just overtly religious. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Believe the good news of the kingdom of God. Repent. And, 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 and Jesus, I mean, John the Baptist, by the way, he, 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 he preached and he taught the bapt and he baptized with the baptism of repentance. Turn from your own ways and, and get prepared for the one that's coming after me. Pra praise God Almighty. There's, there's coming one who, who after me who's mightier than me. So I'm going to baptize you saying that you repent, that you turn from your own evil ways, that you, you turn from your own ways and you turn to the ways of God and you're waiting on this promised Messiah. This one who's coming after me, who's going to baptize you, what? With the Holy Ghost. That's a Profound statement right there. That oh, praise God Almighty. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And and it happened. But the key thing in both cases, even to get ready for, for Jesus, repent. Had the baptism of repentance. Jesus taught, he came preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Repent. Praise God Almighty. And we'll go here if if we will to the book of Isaiah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to read all of it. Did you know everybody, almost all people who, who go to church or, or believe, they, they, they know about Isaiah 53. Praise God, Isaiah 53. We're not going to read all of it. Isaiah 53, starting with the, with the fourth verse. This was a prophetic scripture about Jesus. Centuries before he was born, I believe. And, but everybody knew who, who, who this was talking about. It, in, in the days of Jesus, after the ascension of Jesus back, back into heaven, you know, people knew, they, they knew when they quoted Isaiah, they knew who this was talking about because it didn't even call a name. It, it just, it, it just said, who shall believe our report, our report to whom his arm of the Lord revealed? He shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground. It's talking about the, the, the servant of the Lord, but never mentioned any name. But the men of God, the apostles and all, they, 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 they knew who, who this was. And it went on to say, this is what we want to deal with right here in the, in the, the 53rd chapter and the fourth verse. It says, surely he has, he has borne our griefs. You know what that is? Our diseases and our sicknesses. He has borne our griefs, griefs and carried our sorrows, you know what that is? Our afflictions and our pains. He, Jesus did all this for us. He, all, he, he bore all of that for us, took care of it for us. And we did esteem him. We could consider him which he was. He was stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Praise God Almighty. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Thank you, Jesus. For our transgressions, for what we did, he hadn't done anything. He that knew no sin became sin for us. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. He was punished. He was whipped, disciplined so that we could have peace. And with his stripes, we are healed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That is beautiful. That's, that's, that's beautiful. And then it says in the sixth verse, all we like sheep have gone astray. All of us, we have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That is so beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. So he took all of our, God laid on Jesus all our iniquities. He took who and what we were, our sins, our, our iniquities, our filth, our, our, our sickness. He, he took all that for us. And, 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 and by his being crucified as he was, and, and, and becoming sin for us, 
He took what we were and gave us what he was, his righteousness. We have received, and that's the only way we, we can become the righteousness of God is through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about him. God has provided all of that for us in the person of his son, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of the living God. Only through him, only through the Lord Jesus, the resurrected Christ. Praise God. And, but it says, the first part of that sixth verse, all we like sheep, we have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And that is the truth. The human race turned away from God, turned against God. It, some, tur some turned to rebellion, rebelled against God. Some turned in total rejection of God. But we, as, as humans, we, we turned to our own way. So what, what do we need to do? Repent. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's what, that's what repentance is all about, to repent and turn to God, turn to the way of God. Thank you, Jesus. We, we, we got to keep on. We got to keep going. Got to keep going. Let's, let's, let's go here to the book. That, that's what this is all, repentance. Don't ever think that you are above the need to repent. And, and that's why it's, it's really amazing how some people, and Jesus talked about them in, in another part of Isaiah, I believe around the first chapter of Isaiah, how some people are so self-righteous. They don't think they need anything. They don't, they don't think they need God. They don't need the Holy Ghost. They don't need, they don't need to, they want to be forgiven, but they don't need to forgive anybody else. You know, they're so much better than everybody else. And, 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 and the Lord spoke to him. God said, he said, don't come near to me. Ye that you, you, say, and, and you say, don't bother me. That you, you say within yourself, come to other people. Come not near to me because I'm holier than thou. Some people feel like that. They believe that. So nasty, nasty attitudes, nasty, hard, arrogant, sinful people. And, and with that kind of attitude, no, that's unbelief. Total unbelief in the mercy of God, unbelief in, in the way of God, unbelief in the love of God, forgiveness of God, compassion of God. That's total unbelief. But they said, oh, I'm, I'm better than you. And arrogant, mean, hateful, unforgiving, un unmerciful to other people, but they want to they want to be they want to be pious, just good believers, so-called Christians. That's not God's way. That's not God's spirit. That's something else. That is a spirit of deception. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's why a lot of people have been taken with, with seducing spirits. They've, they've been enticed. They've been charmed. And, and seducing spirits are found all through the church world. That's, that's just the truth. They're enticed into religion and seduced into, oh boy, and, and they think they can live and be any, any kind of way. It, it, that, and I know people make mistakes. I have, God knows, I've made a ton. God have mercy on me. And he has. Praise the Lord. But people change. You know, God, by God's spirit, by God's grace, that, that, all, that, that all ongoing process of growth and love and, and development by the Holy Ghost and that the, the, the new man growing, the inner man growing in them, that's, that's always going to bring change. Repentance is always going to bring change in a person's life. But some people don't think they need it, you know. But the whole human race has gone out of the way. The only way you can get to God is to repent. That's the truth. Repent and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as, as your Lord and Savior. Receive not, not just in name. You know, some people got that in name. That's in, that's in the Bible too. They carry a name. And that's it. You know, we might read about it in a little bit. But that they're believers, they're saved, they go to church. They, yeah, but, but, but the heart, the, the, the hearts are not really with God. And that's the mistake, and that's why so many, God have mercy, it's, it's almost frightening to think of it. So many people are going to wind up in a burning hell, a lake of fire and brimstone, who once sat in, on the church pew, who once preached from the church pulpit, or sang in the church choir, and talked about Jesus. And I, It's, it's going to happen. Jesus talked about that himself in St. Matthew 7. He said, said, men are going to come and say, Lord, Lord, haven't I done this? I've preached, I've sung in the choir. I've done many wonderful works in your name. In your name. Oh, God have mercy. You better make sure. Don't play with your soul. This is real. This is real. Thank God. I thank God for his spirit, for his word. I praise the Lord for his word. God knows what he's doing. Repent. Repent. Believe the gospel. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. 
turn from your own way or turn from your own, like religious ways or self-righteous ways or your own pride, your own arrogance. Turn to the ways of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, now let's, let's, let's read here. We're going to keep moving very quickly. I'm not going to be able to read all this. We're gonna, I tell you what, let's, let's go to Revelation. Let's, let's read some of this. In the book of uh, Revelation, talking about the churches. I'm going to just read through some. I'm not reading it all. I'm going to skip through it so you can read it when, when you get through. Ask God for understanding. We've had a, a message on this before. One day we, we definitely need to have a message on all these churches. These were the seven churches of Asia. And God dealt with them, sent them a message. Sent them a message. Jesus actually sent in this message to the angels of the churches in these different different places. That means the messengers, the, who the, the pastors, because the pastors were because the, the overseers of the church and the, the way the pastors was this, that's what was going on in the church. What the pastors permitted, what they taught, what they didn't believe, or what whatever it is. And so he sent them the message. Actually, gets giving the message to the whole church through the messenger to, to the pastor from the angels of the seven churches. And this first one in the book of uh, Revelations, uh, let's start with the, the second chapter. Let's, listen to this. Uh, now I'm not going to read all of them now. We're going to skip through them. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know what you're doing. I know your works your labor, your patience, and how you can't bear them which are evil. And you've tried them which say they're apostles, and they're not. And you found them liars. And you've borne, and, and you've had patience. And for my name's sake, you've labored, and you've not fainted. Hallelujah. You've labored for, the, for, for my name's sake. Nevertheless, nevertheless, out of all this good stuff you've done, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left Thy first love. I remember when, when I, Jesus, this is Jesus, the spirit of the anointing of the Christ speaking. You've left your first love. It used to all be about me. And in a church that doesn't proclaim Jesus and glorify Jesus, sometimes you find, and I hate to say it, sometimes you find the preachers are going to make themselves the God of the church. That's wrong. That is blatant idolatry and sin. That's filthy, that's nasty, distasteful, ugly, whatever you want to say about it. That, that's just, you, so you, you've left your first love. You've, you've done all this work, you've done, you're even laboring in my name, but you, you, your hearts have left me. You, you set your spiritual affection, your, 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 your affection on something else other than me. You talk about me, but you set your affection on something else. So he said, say, I've got that against you. You have left your first love. And then he goes on to say, to remember, therefore from when you follow it, remember where you come from. Remember where you're supposed to be. The way you really started out in, in truth and, 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 and uh, with a bond between us in, 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 in spirit. Remember from whence thou art fallen and do what? Repent and do the first work. Start over. Praise God Almighty. Learn. Start over. from, from uh, If you have to, from, from babe status. Start over with, with, with the truth. And do the first works, or else I will come unto you quickly and remove the candlestick out of its place, except you repent. You have to repent. And th that, that's, the whole, that's the whole message. See, and with all these churches, these seven churches, I think there was only, uh, God told all of them. He had a, a message of, of repentance to, to all of them. And I, I hope I can find this. Let's see. Uh, except the, the church of, of, of Philadelphia, I believe. You know, he, he, they, they were good. They, they, they loved God. The, the, the church people say it's a church of brotherly love or whatever, but, 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 but they, they, they loved Jesus. The, the church uh, at Smyrna, they, they endured a lot of persecution. And, and he told them, uh, talk to them. I know your poverty. I know what you're going through. I know what you, you, you need to do. He, he said, they, I think he, he gave them somewhat of, of, of a pass. He loved them. But the angel of the church of Pergamos. He, he said, I know your works where you dwell. You sit right in the middle of where Satan's seat is and you hold fast my, my name. You've not denied the faith and praise God. He said, you dealt with, with uh, people who were given to martyrdom and all that. He said, you, so you, but, but, but he said, you got this one thing in the 15th verse. Say, you, you also, you got them that hold the doctrine of the uh, Nicolaitans. Say, which thing I hate. 
These people, they, they lived according to the flesh. If it feels good, it is good, do it. They just uh, lived a, a, a lustful life, they did whatever they wanted to do in opposition to and, and, and contrary to, to the word of God. And he told them to repent, to repent, or else I will come unto you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of man. So he told, he told a lot of them. Uh, the church of Thyatira. So you've got that spirit of Jezebel there, there in your church, seducing the prophets. So you get rid of all that. So of, of course, all of them had to repent. And he went on in, in the third chapter. He says here, in the third chapter, first verse, until the angel of the church in Sardis write, these things says he has the, 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 spirits of, the seven spirits of God. Hallelujah. The seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that thou hast a name that you live. This, this is amazing. But you did. You, you live, you perfect. Listen to this. I told you this was in the Bible. You have a name that you live. You, you call yourself the bride of Jesus. You, you, you call yourself saved. You, you love God. You, you, you profess a, a, a believerhood of the, the congregation of, of, of the righteous. But you, the, the, you're living the life of God, but you're dead. You're dead. And so many people live like that. People live like that. They talk about Jesus and talk about, and I have to say, so-called Christianity, I hate to say it, but so-called Christianity, they talk about it. But it's nowhere, it, 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 the, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, it, it, is, is, is far from them. And, and as Jesus said, so you, you worship me. He talked about people like that. You worship me with your mouth and with your lips, but your heart. Listen, your spirit, your heart of hearts is far from me. Do you think those people are going with Jesus? Come on, let's, let's, let's be for real. So, but the, 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 the word repent, please. Don't be too, don't let Satan kill you. Don't let Satan kill you. Don't let, don't, don't let Satan use pride to kill you. Don't let, and we were just talking about that earlier. Some people, they will. You know, don't, don't preach, don't care who it is. Just for friendship's sake, for wh whatever reason, family member, I don't care who, what it is. Don't go to hell for anybody. And there's some people who will, who, who will take you by the hand for friendship's sake. That way, they just, I just like them so much. And see, do your flesh Anything. Don't let anybody take you to hell. But some people are, are, are take you by the hand and walk you, walk with you right up to the gates of hell. And that's what's going on with some folks. Be led to God. Be led to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, that's what I say. Praise God. And, and, and God's not just who or whatever we think he is or supposed to be. God is who he is. He's who he, say, he said he is. Not what we think or feel by our own little, little puny fleshly minds. Let's go now. Let's go to Hebrews since we talked about it. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. Very quickly. I'm going to close out here in a minute. Repent, folks. Turn to God. Turn to God. Forget everything. It, it, everything. It, nothing else matters but your eternal soul. That's the thing. Receive Jesus for yourself, your Lord, your Savior. Love God. Take the truth of God's word, and that's, that's what you stand on. Let's, let's go, let's see if we can get this right that's quick. Well, Hebrews third chapter, okay. Chapter. Starting with the 12th verse. Take heed, brethren, and I'll take, you know, to give earnest, give, your, 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 give attention to this. G give very serious and earnest attention to this. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. That's an evil thing in departing from the living God. And some people will. Some people depart from God in faith. They depart from God through unforgiveness. They refuse. They refuse to go God's way. They, re they depart from God in rebellion. See, that's, that's like a, you don't see, see people out in the streets jumping around, hollering, I'm not going to obey God. They don't have to say anything. They just don't do it. They've declared that I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not forgiving them. I'm not going to love them. I hate them. You know, hatred is of the devil. Listen, listen at this. So you, you have to be careful that, and as the book says, take heed, as the scripture says, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. So if you have that in you, you're, you're standing on some very dangerous and shaky ground. 
in departing from the living God, but exhort one another, brothers and sisters in Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ, saved believers, it, that means to encourage one another daily while it's called today. Don't wait till tomorrow and say, I'm going to straighten them tomorrow. Tomorrow might be too late for you. A lot of people today are looking forward to tomorrow and they'll never see it. They won't wake up in the morning. It happens. It's going to happen to all of us, Jesus, Terry. It happens. Listen, but exhort one another daily while, it, that means encourage the, the godly way, to encourage and, and to promote godliness daily while it is called today, lest there lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is very deceitful. Sin is very subtle, very seductive. Sin feels good, feels good for people to feel righteous in, in unforgiving, to feel righteous in holding animosity, to feel righteous in taking, it feels like they're doing the right thing. This is what I feel, therefore it's right to hate. You know, that's wrong. That is a deceitful spirit. And, and this, we know where deceit comes from, from Satan. You know, Jesus never spoke a word of deceit, a word of gal out of his mouth at all. All that, the, the, that emotion and feeling, those horrible, sinful emotions, that come, that's, that's Satan. That, that's the operation of Satan. So don't find yourself hardened against God because you find yourself so far out there so hard that you can't hear his voice. You can, you'll be numb, you'll be, numb. you'll be so full of hatred and hard, so full of unforgiveness, you won't be able to be touched by God's spirit. And, and God, he won't make you do anything. You know, not, not at all. You read in, in, in the, the, the scriptures where the Bible tells you how the, the Holy Ghost led us to do this. Or led, you know, it didn't make us do anything, you know, but led. <laughs> the spirit of God led, the, but not, God's not going to make you do anything. So, so if, if you don't have this, th this kind of spirit, this, this kind of willing and welcoming spirit of, uh, for, for God, this welcome attitude this, uh, for, for God to have your way in my life, oh God, I receive whatever, whatever you want to do with me. Hallelujah, Jesus. You, you're a lost ball in that weeds. So you don't want to sit there, be hardened to the deceitful and just sit there with an the evil heart of unbelief, which will cause you to do what? Depart from the living God. And you can sit up in church all day long and still be so far away from God that, that, that you, 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 can't, you can't really see him. You can't see him. God's not really real to you at all, but you think you're okay. You know, just that, that's dangerous. So you depart from God and, and, and then you also hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For if we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. Some people don't have that true faith, that real faith that keeps them, no matter what, man, ups and downs, through, through the, the, the thin and, and the thick of it, the, the good and bad. You know, some people, they don't have it. You know, they don't have that enduring kind of faith. So they don't have the faith of God, the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and so it says, now while it is, while, while it said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart is in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, they still provoked God. Listen, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Everybody is really not saved. Everybody that came, that left Egypt, they weren't really with God. They weren't really with Moses. They were looking for some kind of change. They were looking for maybe to get out, to get from under Pharaoh's hand or from under the whip for a minute, you know, but, but, but still they weren't with, they weren't with the program as, as, as in the days of Moses like people today. People will come off the street, you know, the, like the Bible says, the dog that was turned uh, 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 from his vomit, he'll, he'll, go, he'll, he'll return right back to his vomit. So eat something that makes him sick, the world makes him sick, they get fed up through, through, and through the knowledge of God, they, uh, of the word of God, they know that there's something better. They know what it is to be churchy, to be religious, and they'll turn from it for a while, but then they'll go right back to that same filth and puke that made them sick, whether it's through self-righteousness or just blatant sin. And some people don't realize that sin is sin. I don't care if it's the, the attitude of, of the mind, the thoughts, the body, uh, or and are the actions of the physical body. Sin is sin. Unbelief is sin. All of that's wrong. Unforgiveness is sin. Arrogance is sin. Pride, that's, that's, that's an abomination to God. God hates that. 
That's, that's, that's the book. That's the Bible. So you have, to, you have to repent. See, what are we saying? Repent. Praise God. Don't, uh, don't harden your heart. So, well, I'm not going to do it. And some, some, somebody's doing that right now. Some people do, are doing that now. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I don't care what anybody says. They don't care what God is saying. They don't care what this book says. No, I know. See, they make themselves God. They are better than God. They, they're, they are more authoritative in their book, in their eyes, than God. I don't need that. I'm God. I, you know, I'll, I'll handle that myself. I don't need your, your word, God. I don't, I don't need to repent. God have mercy. We're going to close out. Let's, let's, let's keep going. Let's, let's, let's try to get, get, get to the end of this right quick. Praise God. That's why the book tells us. I tell you what, let's read this one in Hebrews. It says Hebrews 12. Since we're in Hebrews. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, everything that weighs us down and, and, and keeps us from doing what God wants us to do. It, everything that, that tries to get in our way and, and, and slow us down in, in the race that we say we're, we're when people say I've been running for Jesus, people sing a song like that, running for Jesus for a long time and I'm not tired yet, you know. You, know, you find people in a race, they don't want anything to weigh them down. They don't want, you don't find people running a race in a, in a three-piece business suit. No, no, they, they, are, they, they don't have anything weighing them down. They are as scantily clad as possible. Little, little t-shirt or whatever and, and shorts and, and, and track shoes and they're, they're, they're out there getting it, you know. But in this race, everybody's running their own race. We're not competing against anybody else. We're not trying to outdo a, a competitor. No, we're just we're wanting to run the best race we can for the Lord Jesus Christ in the ministry that he's given us. Listen, so it says, let us let, lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, so easily uh, takes advantage of us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And that sin that so, the sin that so easily besets people is the sin of unbelief. That, that, that'll, 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 that'll take you out of the race. That'll not just slow you down. That will take you out of the race. And it says, let's look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, praise God, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Thank you, Father. He looked beyond the cross for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. What joy? Paradise, glory with God again and, and us, the, our salvation, praise God, bringing many to God through his finished work, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. And, and then the, the book tells us, we're going to close out. I remember one time, and uh, you can read it in, in uh, I believe, St. Matthew, around the 18th chapter, how the disciples were having a little, little discussion amongst themselves about who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom and, and all this and who's going to do this. Who, and, and Jesus said, except you be converted. You, you, you need to change your heart. You need to repent. You need to have a change of the way you are thinking. You need to turn from, from those vain, evil thoughts. It's not about greatness and position and who. It's not about that. It's about God. It's, everything is about God. He said, except you be converted and become as, as little children, you, you're a little, in no way, no, no way will you, will you enter. Praise God to you. Well, let's, we're going to get it. We're going to get it. St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Very quickly, we're about to close out. Here it is, 18. Let's start with the first verse. At the same time, St. Matthew 18, hope, hope, you, hope you have it. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, except you be changed, except you turn from the way that you are, be converted, and become, turn from yourselves, and become as little children with a, with a childlike attitude and have a childlike faith in God, Ye shall not enter into to the kingdom of heaven. Everything is about repentance. Everything is about conversion. It's, nothing is about us. Everything is about turning from our own way in our everyday life, everything, from our own way to the ways of God. 
That, that's what it's all about. I just, I just had to get that and, and, and be willing to, to praise God. And I just, I just thank the Lord so much because he doesn't need us. As the Bible says, we're going to read this. We're going to get ready. We're going we're to close out in St. Luke the third chapter. I think it's one in St. Mark too, but let's, let's go to St. Luke, the third chapter. Praise God. I don't think that, that God, he has to have us to express himself. No, he does not. God has, we, he needs us so much. God needs nothing. You know, we read that in Acts. Acts says that. Not, as uh, as uh, I think Paul was preaching there in Athens and said, not as, not as God needs anything, because he, he does not, you know. And uh, David said it in the book of Psalms. I, I believe the book of Psalms around the 50th, even the 55th chapter, I think 50. He said, if God said, if I were hungry, I wouldn't ask you. For, for everything belongs to me, the, the, the cattle of a thousand hills, all the, the, I'm going to take a, a bullock out of your flocks because all, all, all the, the, the herds and everything belong to me anyway. Everything is mine. Said God. So God needs us for nothing. Some people think that God, and they have that, that attitude, well, I'll show them. I, I, I don't need to go to church. You are, you're crazy. I hate to say, you, you, are, you have some kind of spirit talking, not godly spirit either, some kind of spirit dealing with your mind right there. You know, when God says, you know, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. Okay, okay. Or like you're going to hurt God or hurt somebody. No, you won't. You, you'll destroy yourself. And time always tells. That's the truth. You will destroy yourself. God does not need us. He doesn't need me to preach. Praise God. Let's, let's read this. Here's the book of St. Luke, the third chapter, second verse. All right. And it, let's, let's start here. Okay, and Annas and Caiaphas, being the high priest, the, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias in the wilderness. This was John the Baptist. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of what? Repentance for the remission of sins. To repent from your sins, turn to God, be ready for the one that's coming after me. As, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways shall be made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers. Why? Because a lot of Pharisees and Sadducees and self-righteous people, they, a, lot, a lot of people came there. You know, some folks are just coming out of curiosity without a heart of repentance, without turning. Some people, they'll say it, but they won't do it. You know? And John saw that they, they had no change of heart, no change of thought, no change of life, nothing. So he, he, he said this, you generation of vipers, who has warned you to, to flee the wrath to come? He said, he said, oh, yeah, who's warned you to, to flee the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruit worthy of repentance and begin not to say within yourselves, well, we don't need to repent. You know, some people are self-righteous. Say, we have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you, then this is, he, he told them, don't even think like this because we're children of Abraham. We're automatically a children of God. And Jesus already dispelled that in St. John, the eighth chapter, when he, he told them, say, you, so you say you're Abraham's seed, but you seek to, ki to kill me. You can't hear my word because you're really of your father, the devil. So everybody's not born for God. That's just, that's just the truth right there, okay? So that's what, what John the Baptist was saying. He said, don't, don't even try to, to use that, 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 that line that we're, we're Abraham's children. He said, don't say that because God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Praise the Lord God Almighty. Now, that's beautiful. <laughs> that is able of these stones to, to raise up children unto Abraham. That is beautiful. And, and in another place, I believe it was in, in the, another one of the Gospels, I believe St. John, one of them, where, where, where they, were, they, were, they were coming, with Jesus, they, they were coming down out of the Mount of Olives and, and people were saying, Hosanna and praise the Lord. And they were, they were praising him. And, and the, the Pharisees wanted people to, to be quiet, to stop to stop praising God. And, 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 and Jesus said, if these hold their peace 
and don't cry out, even the stones would crowd in praise. You know, so God doesn't need us. He re- it's a, a blessing and a privilege. It, it's so sweet of God. I thank the Lord God for his mercy, for his, gener- for his generosity, for his goodness. I thank God. According to his word was said again, we might have talked about it last week a little bit, that, that he, he counted, not that we were, he counted us faithful and put us in his ministry. Thank God that he put his words in my mouth. I praise the Lord. Thank God that he thought on any of us. Thank, before the world was ever formed, thank God. But don't get that arrogant attitude where God needs you to perform a work or he needs you to do. It's a blessing. It's a privilege. It's an honor. It's a, 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 a just praiseworthy to God to have been chosen even to call his name. So let's, let's live for the Lord and, re, and remember that no matter what we do, turn from your own way. First of all, you to come to Jesus. You got to turn from your own way to the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn from your own way to the ways of God. In your daily living, make sure that you, you turn from your own arrogance, your own pride or whatever, to turn to the way of God. And you will find that God, you, that you'll grow. You'll grow so much in the statue of the grace of God as a child of God, as a son or daughter of God. And, and you, you continue to grow in the blessedness and in the blessings of of the Lord. And this is what I want to see for all believers, believers I say, because everybody is not a believer. So true believers, praise God. Pray, stay with the word. Stay with God's word and God will bless you. Praise God. I thank the Lord for this time he's given us today. Thank God for his mercy, for his grace. And I'll say goodbye and may God bless you until the next time. You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.